Hi booktube, Lynette here and in this week's video I'm going through the second half of the books that I read in the month of March. If you haven't seen part one I'll leave it linked up above in the cards so you can click and go and watch that if you want to. Um, but without further ado let's get on to the books. As I said in part one I managed to finish 11 books in the month of March so in this video I'm going to talk to you about books 6 to 11. So as I said um, in March, I managed to finish my TBR um, quite early in the month. So the rest of March was spent just picking random books off of my existing TBR and trying to knock a few more off the list and see how many I could get through. And as I was scrolling through unread books, I found Beautiful Salvation by Jennifer Blackstream. This is a book five in her Blood Prince series and it's the final book that is following the five main characters um, from the original setup and there's an overarching plot where there is a tree and this tree needs the blood of the princes to free her and free her mate and she is in this final book she's waiting for the final prince to give her his blood only it has to be after he has found and mated his one true love so in this book we're following a god called samal uh who his powers have been greatly reduced uh his powers are tied to the land in which he presides over only the woman that he was supposed to uh, marry um she has been put into a deep sleep now i should say these stories are based on fairy tales so they're fairy tale retellings but the fairy tale retellings with a twist so in this book we have um not rapunzel i've forgotten her name aurora her name is aurora in the disney princess retelling it's sleeping beauty so the princess in this one is called Ayana and she is based on Sleeping Beauty. Basically, she's been put into a deep sleep because of a curse that's been put on her. She doesn't know that she's in a deep sleep. She thinks she's actually living in the real world. And Samal is her god. Um, he's the prince that is supposed to save her and wake her up with true love's kiss. And it's about how they actually get to the stage where he wakes her up. And it turns out that Ayana actually has powers of her own. It's about how they fall in love because they've never met before. Um, although Samal has met her, uh, she doesn't remember him at all. And all she knows of him is what other people have told her in the dream world. And is that he is not a good god. So he has all of that to overcome as well as find a way to break the curse to wake her up so that his land can be saved and his power can be restored and we have um, a little bit of an adventure along the way. It does draw in the previous four princes from the previous four books. Um, with each book they all have a role to play in helping each other out and growing as friends as well and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a great ending to the series like I say, it was based on fairy tale retellings and they're all fairy tales that I know. Um, like I say, in, although there are some elements, so in this one we had Sleeping Beauty and She Has To Be Woken With True Love's Kiss, Samal is not based in any way, shape or form on the original prince from her story. There is always differences. One of the previous books was actually based on Little Mermaid, but the prince was nothing like Prince Eric. Um, and I think maybe one or two of the princes were based on fairy tale princes but the princess that they ended up with was not the princess that they ended up in the original fairy tale so so I really love that mix and match of um that style of storytelling thoroughly enjoyed it and if you want um some romance novels based on fairy tales then I would definitely go ahead and recommend Jennifer Blackstream to you thoroughly enjoyed the blood prince series and I think they're a great place to start so after Beautiful Salvation, uh, there are two other novels set in the same world, um, but are not part of the original storyline. Um, and I decided that because I had nothing else to read, that I would get on and not only would I complete the whole series, complete the series, original series, that I would complete the spin-offs as well. 
and the first one of those is the pirate's witch and this is about a pirate called tyre and a witch called ingrid i think this one again it's another not particularly fairy tale but i think it's a crossover of persephone and from hades and persephone and hook from um peter pan um and ingrid is an earth witch who is kidnapped by tyre uh, because he needs a witch to help him and in this one we have a little bit of Russian folklore um, because he has to track down the mythical firebird and capture the firebird to give to the ogre king or he's going to be killed by the ogre king and he needs Ingrid to help him with this. Ingrid isn't a very good sailor, uh, she is tied to the land and she does need to be on land to be happy and to survive so being at sea for a long period of time isn't very good for her. Uh, Ingrid is very fierce, very sassy, very funny and she, when she's not feeling well, when, when she actually finds her sea legs, she takes Tyre in hand and she does mean business and she's, she yes, she doesn't pull any punches. Um, however, she does come to fall in love with him and he with her and there are some adventures um there is i should have said with beautiful salvation as i should have said um in my previous video as well uh there is some sexual content in here it's not enough to be called erotica but there is some very sizzling scenes uh so if you're interested in reading the series then go into it knowing that um but they are great fun and i really enjoyed it i liked how it wasn't straightforward i liked how um, both of them had issues that had to be worked out and although it was a very short book um, that they did get worked out and it didn't feel like that it was rushed um, or too quick um, I enjoyed it I didn't quite find the falling in love part of it was quite so prominent as it had been in the previous books um, but there was still enough of it there for it to be believable and I would definitely, definitely go on and read more from Jennifer Blackstream um, after reading this entire series. So like I said, there was another spin-off. Uh, the next spin-off follows Kirill, who is the vampire from, I think, book two. Um, and it's a follow-up to The Happy Ever After, uh, because Kirill is the one who was the least... I don't know, he, he was very focused on where they were going rather than how they were getting there. Um, and he would be the he was the one that was least attentive to his partner's needs. Um, so in this book, obviously, there is going to be um, so he has an additional book and this is called Dead to Begin With. And this is marked as book seven in the series, in the Bloodprint series. Um, but it's just literally a follow up. Um, Kirill hasn't been paying attention to his happy ever after and she's feeling neglected and although it hasn't started to affect their relationship it could and Kirill is visited and in this book um, Jennifer Blackstream borrows from Charles Dickens and um, heavily from A Christmas Carol. Kirill is visited by the ghost of the past, ghost of the present and the ghost of future yet to come and shown how things could be affected and one possible future if he doesn't change his ways. Uh, so it's quite fun. Kirill's quite, um, uh, he's quite an obstinate character. He's quite, quite, yeah. Um, so he's not quite happy about being visited by these ghosts and he's a little bit rebelling but he does come to see the error of his ways and he manages to turn things around before even his wife knows that there's a problem um so it was a very short book uh, it was only 67 pages so this is the book that was less than 100 pages but i'm still counting it because it's knocked it off my tbr for the for this year um and thoroughly enjoyed it it was a great ending to the series and I'm glad that I can say that not only have I knocked more books off my TBR I've finished an entire series this year uh, so which is a first I haven't finished a, an actual series for a long time so I'm really pleased with that we were still only halfway through the month and I had finished eight books 
eight books yes i finished eight books um and i say it was middle of the month i had seen right at the beginning of the month that sam over at thoughts on tomes and i'll leave a link to her channel down below as well uh, she had announced another round of the readathon that she does called Tone Topple. Basically, the aim of Tone Topple is to read books and stories that have more than 500 pages. She does set other challenges for you if you want to try and follow them. Uh, however, I am at work and trying to read more than one 500 page book in two weeks isn't going to happen. So I decided not to follow those. But I decided to take part because I did have a tome on my uh, TBR that I wanted to get to. And that book is The Fires of Heaven by Robert Jordan. This book um, is book five in Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series. I am rereading them. I only got to book nine when my original read through because I was reading them as they were originally released and book nine is right in the middle of the series and it's right in the middle of the slump so i did struggle with that but i decided a few years ago that i would pick up all the books and reread them again so i have all books in the series and this was the next book that i had to read um we're following a group of youngsters from a small village called emmons field those youngsters are rand egwene nenave matt and perrin uh, in this book, we don't really see very much of Perrin. You get a short update right at the beginning of the book. But this book mainly follows where Rand is in his story and where um, Elaine, who is another young woman that they've met along the way, and Nenev have got to in their stories. So it's following their adventures this time around. They are the three main characters. Rand is um, carrying on and fulfilling the prophecies of the dragon because he is the dragon reborn. And Nenev and Elaine are getting stronger in their Aes Sedai um, powers and they are travelling and trying to find um, a group of Aes Sedai who have broken away from the White Tower. I can't really tell you any more than that. To tell you any more than that would be to spoil things for you. Um, needless to say, it is a series that I'm really enjoying. Uh, I'm hoping possibly in the next couple of months to maybe pick up book six. Book six, though, is a chunker. Um, it's it's a it's one of the three that is a thousand pages. Um, this one was eight hundred and seventy seven pages. It took me the full fortnight of Tone Topple to read it, um, but I did manage to finish it on the final day of Tone Topple. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, and it's a, it's a like I say. It's a very long series. It's 14 books. It's fantasy novels. Um, the early books is very, very heavily influenced by Tolkien and by The Lord of the Rings. And you can see that. You can still see elements of it um, going into this one. But it has started to move into its own story from here. And I'm looking forward to getting through. And hopefully at some point in the next couple of years, because I think that's how long it's going to take me, is to finish the entire series. So even though Tome Topple is a two-week readathon, I still had three days of the month to go when I finished Fires of Heaven. However, I had agreed uh, back at the beginning of the year that I would read an advanced copy of a book for one, one, one of my all-time favourite romance authors. It's a book that's been delayed. I should have had it at the beginning of March, but it took her a bit longer to rewrite and edit um, than she thought. So she had to put the release date back to the 2nd of April. Um, but that did mean that advanced reader copies were going out on the 29th of March, uh, which fell quite nicely because Tone Topple finished on the 28th of March and I had to read it. Um, so I picked that one up and that book is The Two Week Stand and it's by Samantha Tao. I am extremely grateful to Samantha for sending this to me. I've received the last four or five books of hers as advanced reader copies and I'm very grateful that she has included me as part of her team of fans that get to read the books early so that we can put up reviews um, on the day that the book's released so that people who are looking for something to read um, can see early reviews of it and get a feel for, for what this book might be like. It is done on the basis that we will give her an honest review. So if we don't like the book, she is quite happy for us to say so. Um, there will be people who haven't enjoyed it, uh, and I completely get that. 
but this book for me was brilliant and I absolutely adored it. I actually read it in one day. I started it in my lunch break um, on the Monday the 29th and I read it for about 20 minutes then and I got home from work and I picked it up and I didn't put it down until the book was done. Um, it's not often these days that a romance novel gets me to the point where I cannot put it down. Um, with romance I can pick it up and leave it. It's been a long long time since I felt compelled to read a book from start to finish um, and especially a romance book. We are following the two main characters who are Dylan and she has decided to go to the Maldives on her honeymoon on her own because a few weeks before the wedding she found out that her fiancé was cheating on her with her mother and she's like I say she's gone to the Maldives it was meant to be her honeymoon she's decided to go on her own um which was a very brave thing to do I know because I've not gone on a honeymoon on my own but I've gone on a holiday on my own before and, and with a load of strangers uh so I know how brave that is um so I did enjoy that um element of it um she's quite sassy and feisty and fun she's everything I enjoy in a character she's not she's timid but she's not um she's just shy around new people unless she's had a few drinks which I don't know I don't know how Sam manages to do this I've never met Sam Towell in in real life um I would really love to because I want to ask her how the hell do you know me so well because like I say Dylan is quite a timid she won't always speak her mind in public uh places but if she's got a few drinks then she'll tell the person she's with everything that they need to know about her um, and that is how she meets West. Uh, West is also in the Maldives on, on holiday on his own. And he is sat in the bar when on her first night, Dylan comes in to find more alcohol because she's drunk her hotel room dry. And she des decides to tell him her life history. She is very drunk. She doesn't remember anything. Um, West is a gentleman and escorts her back to her hotel room or to the, the villa where she's staying and she's lost her keys so because he's in the villa next door he says that she can stay in his villa and he puts her to bed in his bed and like the gentleman he is he sleeps on the chair in the room um, and when she wakes up in the morning she has no memory she thinks she's in her room not his uh, so he has to remind her and over the course of the next couple of days they get talking and they decide they're going to have a two-week stand because she needs to have some fun she needs to um, lighten up a little after everything that's gone on for her and he's a player and he's bored so he decides that you know why not have a bit of fun they're attracted to each other and they do and they have fun doing it there there's a lot of funny banter between them um they're not afraid to tell each other what they think um it's not until we get to the end that they don't really know what they're feeling but halfway through the book uh, it's time for them both to leave the Maldives and West decides to invite Dylan to come and stay with him in America because she's not quite ready to go home and face up to the life that she now has to lead following the fallout from her marriage not happening. And then we hit the snags. Um, it was very well done. It wasn't drawn out and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I say, there was a lot of fun and banter between the couple there is a lot of sex in this book so if uh, you don't want something with that then avoid um, but it, again the sex is well written and it's quite enjoyable to read um, but give it a go I've thoroughly enjoyed it um, at this point by the time this is up then all of my reviews are up online so they're on Instagram Goodreads and on Amazon um, and I have given it four stars as I said I don't know how Sam does it, but she manages to write me into every single book. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I would thoroughly recommend Samantha Towell if you want to get into romance and you're not afraid of the sex side of romance novels, then give Sam a go because I thoroughly recommend every book that she's written. So, like I say, that was March the 29th. I read that book in one day and 
I still had two days of the month to go and I'm kind of trying to end the month with no books in progress so that I can start each month fresh. Um, so as I only had two days left and because uh, it was a Tuesday and a Wednesday I work so I don't get lots of reading time um, during the week, only my lunch breaks and maybe an hour or so in the evening I decided to pick up something short. I didn't really want to go through my Kindle again so I had a look through my shelves and I came up with Dragon Mountain by Katie and Kevin Sang. This is a children's book, it's for the 9 to 12 year old um, age range and it's set around um, a group of youngsters from all over the world who travel to China to take part in a summer camp. Um, while they're there, four of the kids that are drawn to the camp are, pet, are grouped together uh, to work together for the whole of the time and they decide that they're going to take a shortcut through a forbidden area of the camp and they come across a mountain which is called Dragon Mountain and they get dragged inside and they reawaken four dragons. Um, they are then paired up with dragons and they have to solve um, a mystery and stop an evil dragon from coming to the human realm and it goes from there and it's their adventures it's a really quick adventure story so for an adult it's a really quick adventure story for um someone in the 9 to 12 year old range um it's probably not quite so quick but it was a really fun really well told book really enjoyed it there is a second book that came out in march this year which i am sorely tempted to pick up and maybe read um at some point in the next couple of months um, because I did enjoy this one and I really want to know what more adventures they go through because you kind of got left on a cliffhanger with this one um, but not the sort of cliffhanger you'd be used to as an adult um, and with real peril but there, you know there's some danger for the for the kids and the dragons um, and I really thoroughly enjoyed it I gave it four stars uh, I think my nephew um, my nine ten year old nephew might have already read it um, but I am going to say to my sister, because at the time that I bought this book, she bought a copy as well, thinking that my nephew might like it. So I'm definitely going to be telling her um, that this was a good book and I did really enjoy it. And I think that my nephew would too. So as I said at the start of part one of my March wrap up, I had a really excellent reading month. I managed to finish 11 books in total and I'm really, really pleased with that progress that I've made. And I'm hoping that I can carry that through to the month of April. Um, at the time that you're seeing, at the time that I'm filming this, it's right at the beginning of April. Um, so I'm not really sure. All I know is that I have uh, at this point a very light reading month so I've set myself an extra challenge towards the end of the month um, and I'll see how I go. So that was everything, those were all 11 books uh, that I read. Like I said I've left part one up in the cards for you if you want to go and see that if you haven't already. Uh, if you didn't comment on my previous video with the books then um, please let me know down below what you read. Have you read any of the books I have? What did you think of them? and I will chat to you all again soon. If you've enjoyed this video then please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already then subscribe. I post videos every Monday. Um, I post four videos a month so if there's five Mondays in a month there will be a break. Um, but keep an eye out for new content from me. If you subscribe you will get a notification and I will see you all again soon. Bye!